You gotta be kidding me. Get on there. Oh, what is the problem with this? Good morning everyone. So I got a free part of a day and I figure it's a good opportunity to change the rear tire on this tractor. This is my old Case 930 series six cylinder diesel. It's in here to have some uh, work done to it. But when I decided this was a perfectly workable project and I was gonna fix it up, I decided I was willing to spend some money on it. And uh, that includes a new, new rear tire. Now that's another thing, sometimes people ask me like how do I manage having however many tractor projects I have out here right now and uh, you know I, I don't take these things on unless I'm 100% committed to seeing them through to the end. There is no buying a tractor then deciding it needs a, a you know $400 rear tire and being like yeah I don't really need that thing after all and then you sell it for less than you have in it. If I bought it I'm going to stick through it and see it to the end kind of like I did with that Zetter. And uh, I, I think it's always gonna be worth it. I've never done that and regretted it. And uh, so that's why I'm willing to, like I said, spend some money and get a workable rear tire on this thing. So this is a pretty large tire. Uh, I don't remember, I think it's a 36 or something. Yeah, 18.4 by 34. And this tire, as so you can see, it's best days are behind it. Uh, but miraculously, it does not leak air. So I'm very, very thrilled with that. Uh, but obviously I don't want to take this thing on the road. It is a little early on to be replacing tires on this, but it does actually run and drive, so it's later than when I usually put workable wheels on stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's on this side. The tire on this side is, uh, good old hard rubber, and, uh, it's got plenty of miles left in it. I know you look at this and you're like, oh, you know, that's, that doesn't look so good or whatever. But for something like tillage work, it would probably not be ideal, but you have to remember, I'm a hay producer. So that means that there's not really all that high torque load on tractor tires and they see a lot of time on the road. So for both of these things, well, for one of these things, the kind of worn tire isn't really uh, a downside. And for the other, the time on the road, the hard rubber is actually an advantage because the more tire ages to an extent, at least on big slow turning wheels like this, the, uh, the longer it'll last without wearing down at all. And I've even seen this on newer stuff. For instance, my Kubota M7060, I bought that thing, pretty much immediately took it out to the field. I remember I got home that night and there was a noticeable amount of wear on the rear tires of that thing. It's like, I'm gonna have to replace these things after every 20 trips out to one of these fields or whatever. I was like, fairly disconcerned with that. And, uh, and now it's two years old and I've been driving it all over the place and there is zero noticeable wear on these tires. So getting a little age on them isn't really a bad thing. The other thing is I was able to find a good used tire for like, I think, I don't remember exactly. It's been sitting out here for a couple months. Pretty sure it costs like a third of what a new one does. So I'm gonna put the used one on where there's that destroyed tire. And, uh, and then someday when this one and the other one wears out, I'll just put some brand new tires on it. But it should last until then. And the best part is this is actually a matching tread pattern for the tire on the other side. Cause for some reason they're not matched on the tractor right now. Yeah. Good year, good for a year as Wes would call it. 18.4 by 34. All right, well, this is gonna be fun. Where's your ball? Bring me your ball. Gotta be careful I don't hit any tractors doing that. So I will say I'm a little apprehensive about changing this because I've not changed a rear tire myself on a tractor before i've only installed them on new rims or you know newly repaired rims however i worked that uh, but i've not had to wrestle an intact full-size rear tractor tire off of a wheel before because on that tractor they were literally rotting off the rim some of you guys remember that so i got this thing here this is the mighty bead buster yeah i've never used one of these before but uh, one of my favorite smaller channels on YouTube, someone that goes by Guy and WY, Guy in Wyoming. Uh, that, that'd be the long version, of course. He loves these things, and he pretty much swears by them. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Yeah, he loves these things, and he pretty much swears by them. And uh, I saw one of these in action on his channel when I wrote to uh, Beadbuster and asked if they'd let me use one to try out on my channel, and they would, so 
This isn't really a normal shill vid because usually all I do is sell paid advertising and they're just kind of letting me try this out, which is super nice of them. Uh, but I'm pretty optimistic. The way this works is we somehow wedge this in and the thingamajigger comes down and mashes the bead on the tire. I don't know. I gotta I gotta read the manual. It's been sitting here for <laughs> it's been sitting here for months, honestly. Alright. Uh let's see. <laughs> No, I don't know how far I'm really going to get on this today. Uh, <laughs> you guys will make fun of me, but a buddy of mine very generously offered to help me change this tire. Uh, but I wasn't planning to do this today. If I was, I would have invited him out here uh, because I can't do anything this morning because I'm waiting to hear back from the local machine shop who's making parts for that tractor right now. And uh, this afternoon, well, we'll see what's going on this afternoon. Hopefully, they'll be done with the parts at some point in the next few hours, and then I'll spend the afternoon reinstalling them. So yeah, I got I got a few hours. I figure I might as well mess with this, but uh, obviously that means I got to figure out how to do this myself because this is just kind of one of those times that popped up, and I was like, well, yeah, got to get it done sooner or later. I think this tractor weighs about 10,000 pounds or so. So for this, uh, I don't even remember what this jack is supposed to lift. But obviously we don't have to lift up the whole tractor, just a quadrant of it. What a nice reassuring sound that was. Isn't that what you want to hear when you're lifting something up you're going to be working on? Oh, oh we're hitting the relief on this jack. I don't know if you can hear that on camera. Now one unexpected problem is that the rear end on this tractor is full of diesel fuel right now because it's being flushed. And unfortunately it's thin enough so it starts leaking through places where the tractor wasn't leaking actual oil. Um, so... Yeah, we got this disgusting mess. Oh, there. And you say, Chucky, let's just take the diesel fuel out. Because it needs to be swashed around in there so it'll scrub out as much milky oil as possible. So we can't do it while it's sitting. All right, this is the big moment. We use this screw here to suck this arm down and that's what wedges it up against the rim. Tiny bit loose, then help this thing in, and then when it starts shoving, it makes progress. Alright, I'm gonna throw some goop on this to help it uh, come loose because this is bone dry right now. I'm sure that's working against us. Just some soapy water here. much out of space on that bolt. This is a particularly stubborn bead. And this stupid GoPro keeps turning itself off for no apparent reason. Yeah. So Man, I gotta figure out how to disable that. This is a pretty stubborn bead. It's still on here. Let's see if we can help it the rest of the way off. Let's take more than that. Oh yeah, that was it. We're coming off. Oh yeah. Aha! Happy New Year! Ah, I, wasn't that bad. I guess now we releaseify this and then pop the backside off. Ah, well done, little bead breaker. How about that? Yeah, I'm not looking forward to wrestling that backside off. You know, it makes me wonder what the chances are it'll just kind of pop off by itself when we pull this front side over the rim here. We can't, because the inside bead has to be in that center dish, the lower part of the rim, for this to work, I think.
I like it. Yeah, it's in there pretty far. Nasty. All right, hopefully now we can pop this clamp off without losing all of our progress. Because with this able to be removed, I should not have grabbed the deep well socket. Because with this able to be removed, hopefully we can spin this, break the rest of this bead. Gotta rescue this so I can stab it into other things. There. All right, we're going this way. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've done it. I think we've done it. Oh, that bead breaker. Dude, that thing got it done. A little bit of a learning curve on that, but still. All right, I'm hoping now, if I shove this tire iron in here, it'll, uh, the backside can come in, thus this can go over the lip. I don't know if we'll get that lucky. Pretty sure that's how it's supposed to work. But that doesn't mean that's how it's gonna work. Where's my Sawzall? Surprise that lasted as long as it did before it bent. Shoot, man. Just doesn't want to come off. I don't know, it's not supposed to be difficult. Beads fully off all the way around and it won't come out. This isn't how it's supposed to happen. Ah, damn it. Get it. And people be like, why don't you just hire this out? Well, one, because I like to be as self-sufficient as possible. Two, because this isn't one job. This isn't the only tire I'm ever going to have to change on a tractor. Thus, uh, if I learned how to do this, it would save me a lot of money and a lot of downtime. Uh, pretty much for the entire rest of my life, so it's motivation enough for me. Come on, get under there. cheesy comments about how I don't have to go to the gym today. But for real, I'm not going.
Oh. I should say it too soon, I guess. Gotta take this valve stem out, get this tube. Of course, it doesn't want to move. Oh no, the rim is stuck, or the, yeah, the tube is stuck to this rim. This has been on here for quite a while, I would say. Oh. So now, get in there, goodness. Changing tires is like a lot of things. It's super easy to do if you know what you're doing. But if you don't, it's kind of a battle. And so I went in, took a bit of a lunch break. And while I was in there, I watched uh, some more videos of people doing this. Oh, that's really in there. A couple more things I want to try. or something? How is that in there so well? There's nothing wrong with that. It works going one way but not the other. How? I can't figure out why this won't come off. This is actually more difficult than the front of this was. All right, so I will be honest, that is uh, without a doubt one of the most difficult things I think I've done in my entire life. It really wasn't that bad until it came to the part where you take off that inside bead. Now, when the people who actually do this do it, it takes seconds. I'm not exaggerating, literally like under five seconds to peel that off. When I do mine, I do the exact same thing they do. I watched one video probably five, six times did 100% to a T exactly what that guy did, this thing just got stuck. And it's, uh, it's a problem when something like that happens because, so you can see there's not really all that much room to work with here. This rim is in pretty close to the back of the tractor. And uh, if something like that decides it's not coming off, you have a major problem and that's exactly what happened. Now, I will say, hindsight being 20-20, one thing I did not think of, evidently that's a fairly common problem. Evidently sometimes they just get stuck like that because someone else I watched on the internet doing this, he thought ahead, he had a crane truck, like a mechanic's crane truck with a hook 
that grabs onto that tire. And so what that does is it enables him when it's when it's stuck like that, it's just it will not move no matter what you do to it. When it's stuck like that, he just grabs it with the hook and uses the crane to pull it this way and it peels it off the rim. So uh, I if I have to do this job again, I will definitely position the tractor someplace where I can come in with the front end loader on another tractor and just peel that off. Other than that one problem, it honestly wasn't all that bad. Now, we gotta straighten out this rim. I gotta get everything fixed where the tire iron, where things just wouldn't peel off the way they were supposed to and this is bent. And I'm also gonna fix the bends that were on this when I got the thing. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna try and loosen these clamps and spin this out further so it matches the wheel on the other side. Because if the new tire wants to be all belligerent, that'll make it easier to get in there. And then obviously I want to clean this rust off as well. But man, am I glad that thing's off. Alright, so I've gone over this. Uh, there is a little bit of pitting and everything on here, but I don't think there's really anything that's going to reach out and cut the tube. Also, I've straightened out this rim both from the, uh, let's say, modifications that I gave it earlier today and also from some of the bends that were in here. And then I sanded down the edge of it where there was a random burr for some reason, I don't really know. Anyway, I had to run and uh, pick something up from the machine shop. Just, you know, trying to get everything done at once here. But this is a tire that's going on. This is a Goodyear Dynamic Di Torque too. There we go. This is a Brazilian tire. And it says somewhere on here, I was looking at it. What I did is I took my leaf blower and I used it to blow out pretty much all the water in there. There's probably a little more that'll collect in the bottom. I'll just use some paper towels or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I figured out the leaf blower thing because you can see that got a ton of water out of this. All right, well, went back to the house, watched someone else do this on YouTube. And uh, so pretty much all we have to do is pile some more metalworking machinery in the immediate area where we're working and it's time to put this on. Oh, I might have to use the uh, floor jack to help me kind of set this onto the rim because the guy I watched on the internet, was well, he was changing a much smaller tire than this and so he could just kind of flop it up on top of the steel rim. I am not so sure I'm going to be able to do that. Also, I don't have any fancy tire soap, so I'm just going to use this dish soap. <coughs> this camera keeps turning itself off still. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think the company that made it just put even more completely pointless software on there to give it abilities that nobody needs or even wants or asks for. And so now, it's getting all belligerent and such. Oh yeah, I'm not that strong. Man, this is getting really frustrating. I wonder how much of this tire weighs. You know, most of the cost of getting this, maybe not most, but I think half was just having it shipped. Heck, I bet that was more than half the cost of the whole dealio here. Oh. Unless you've done this a hundred times, everything, without exception, is just going to be a tooth and nail battle from start to finish. There. So far, that's the only way I can think to describe 
what this is like to actually do. Get under there, you filthy pig. Ugh. 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 There. All right, shoot. Now I'm gonna hit the ground. There. All right, so now, hopefully, with any luck, which I confess I have a negative amount of, ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me, get out in there. Oh, what is the problem with this? Good. Ah, shoot, I forgot to get the water out first. One more wad of paper towels and we ought to be in business. All right, decently dry. Now, one of my many least favorite parts, just we have to shove the tube in. Korea's finest. We got a Brazilian tire. There's a valve stem on this up there. We got a Brazilian tire with a Korean tube on an American-made tractor, which is now owned by an Italian company, or the manufacturer of the tractor is. Ah, beautiful machined brass. Ah, valve stem deal here. All right, I don't know how many, uh, how much air that was, but my gauge on this inflator starts reading at 10 PSI, and it's not reading anything, so it's gotta be less than that. Basically, this bottom section, it looks to the eye pretty well inflated, but what I did is I kept going until this upper section started to feel like it was filling up a little bit. Now, I don't really have a clue what I'm doing here, but someone told me this, so I thought I'd try it. Oh, ha -ha, look, this is already starting to go over the rim. So what I'm gonna do is try to hold this in. It real tight on this thing. Ah. Don't you dare move. Ah, giant. Whoa. All right, this is a bit of a start. I'm trying to peek in. Oh, where's my vice grip? That's another of my favorite tricks that I've blatantly stolen from people on the internet. Yeah, we put this on here and it'll hold the uh, the dealio behind it at least a little bit. Alright. So my new concern is this wheel is directly over bead here and I think it needs to be in more in order to free up enough leverage, slop, whatever you want to say so this can actually go over that. So I'm going to smack it with the uh, sledgehammer here and hope we don't do hours worth of work and a few blows. Yep, we're moving. Oh yeah! Remember kiddos, violence isn't always the answer, but for most things it is. <sighs> okay, so close, so close. Aha! Victory is mine! Woo! Alright, time to quit everything and become a tire guy. No offense, tire guys. All right, here's my doobly do. All right, so I don't speak Portuguese, but I'm pretty sure this is 35 PSI max. And uh, <laughs> so one of two things is gonna happen. Either this is gonna seat properly and nothing's gonna fly apart because it's a used tire of completely unknown age and life, or 
Uh, I won't have to put up with another round of our two-party political system through another election. I would either way. Oh, I don't know if you can see that in there, but the valve stem is like torn off the tube. It's not, it doesn't even look like a pinch. It looks like a tear. You gotta be kidding me. Ah, of course it can't be that easy. Okay, so what I've learned today is uh, one, it's really important that we don't tighten down the nut on the inner tube before we do whatever comes after that part. I don't even remember, it's been a long day. And two, the main thing I learned is when it comes to peeling off the inside of the tire, really the only thing I would have done differently on this project is to driven this outside. So like I said, I could just put the front end loader bucket on it and just peel it right off the rim. That would have made life easy. What's not making life easy is I cannot get this thing to seat tubelessly and I don't want to uh, do what some people do and put an entire like half can of ether in this and light it. Uh, even by my standards that seems a little on the excessive side so what I'm going to do is go on the internet and order another tube. I don't even want to try to fix the one that's in here because it's kind of a pain to have to do this twice. I really don't want to do it three times if the repair doesn't work. And um, you know, even if the repair does work, it's gonna be in the back of my mind. If I just pinched like the side of it or something, I wouldn't really worry too much about fixing it. But like I said, the entire valve stem is like tearing out of it. So that's bad. I thought about using this, but as you can see, there's a lot of rusty, nasty filth on this. And I don't really feel all that comfortable with it. Again, you know, it's kind of a buy once, cry once, just fix it once and it'd be done with it kind of thing. So yeah. <sighs> Such is the way things go. Everything must be exceedingly complicated and difficult. But I'm gonna split the video here because uh, it's mostly done and uh, the only thing left to do is redo something you've already seen me do and this video is probably already like a bazillion hours long. So, yeah. Overall though, how's the job? It's honestly not that bad. Man, this is really getting old. I gotta figure out what's causing that. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I will say the bead breaker is about the only thing today that worked uh, about as well as I was expecting it to. Took a little bit of getting used to, I did have to tap it in there with the hammer a little bit, but as you guys saw, that's a very old, very stiff tire, and I've never used one of those things before, so there might be a better way to use it. So, do I regret doing this in-house? Not really. Um, will I do this again in the future? Unfortunately, yes, but like I said, I'm gonna have that loader ready to just peel off the tire. That was the single worst part of this entire thing, honestly. And uh, it's just, it's not that bad. It takes some good tire irons. I'm glad I have that bead breaker now and some dish soap and your business and uh, only about a week or so until the new tube gets here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more adventures with Brazilian tires because that's a thing. I'm very thankful we're coming up fast on the end of the day. Thanks for watching. I hope this has not really been inspiring because it was a battle from the beginning and kind of a disaster, uh, but now you know what you're getting into and it's honestly not that bad with the right tools and uh, a very um, unlimited amount of patience, which I don't have, but I'm not mechanics raging hardcore yet, so pretty content.